Thank you, Jim. I'm going to be talking about, given that a carbon price is really a certainty at this point, our thoughts at Climate Earth on how one can most effectively prepare for that eventuality. Um, and in that, of course, I'll frame it a little bit by giving you just a very brief overview of, of Climate Earth and then focus on uh, our views on what's the most effective way to prepare for this eventu eventuality. So what's Climate Earth? Uh, we provide a service called Enterprise Carbon Accounting. It's a turnkey service that provides a, what's called a greenhouse gas inventory uh, covering direct, indirect uh, emissions, so your entire emissions of the organization. The process is compliant with all the international standards. Uh, it's highly auditable. Uh, it's very scalable, and it's quite efficient and cost-effective. The concept is to measure, is to help customers um, and companies measure and manage their greenhouse gas reductions across the supply chain. And by that, what we mean is it helps companies answer questions like, what is the cost to my business when carbon has a price? How can I best reduce the cost of carbon? In other words, anticipate this, uh, this change in the economy and manage into it rather than let it hit you. And where can I have maximum environmental impact? Of course, that's a, from a stakeholder perspective, a consumer perspective. Uh, they care about cost, and more and more they're caring about a company's policy with respect to climate change as well. Our prescription for competing in this changing world is, um, is really a five-point prescription. Uh, we think every company should establish a, a general management framework uh, for accounting for carbon. Uh, certainly perform a broad-based assessment to know where you are. If you don't know where you are, you certainly can't decide where you're going to go. Identify hot spots and begin to take action. We also think that given not only the price concerns but the increasing consumer awareness that every company needs to have a component of their brand be climate related. And so establishing external reporting is is going to be a critical factor going into this carbon-constrained economy. And last of all, we do think that there is opportunities for companies not just to manage the risk um, and avoid costs and report, but also in cases uh, to establish very interesting innovative strategies where they can actually capitalize on uh, this changed environment. And I'll give you two examples of uh, innovative strategies that we have seen already underway in the marketplace. One question I always get is, well, can carbon accounting be an effective management framework? Does it have what it takes, essentially? And we look to financial accounting to make comparisons to make that determination. And we think the answer is a resounding yes. Um, standards exist. Um, albeit that they are being refined. The WRI, WBSCSD standards uh, have been around for about 10 years for scope one and two, and scope three and direct emissions is on its way. Uh, audit is required in financial accounting. Uh, we have a validation verification process uh, certainly maturing uh, in carbon accounting. Uh, we have a stable unit of measurement, uh, carbon dioxide equivalents. Both systems uh, can be periodic uh, so that you can track uh, progress and communicate progress to stakeholders and employees. Investment oversight, well, we don't have clarity in that regard, but we do have bills coming, as, as Jim pointed out. Um, and we do have, last of all, a, a clean structure where financial accounting is based on assets, liability, and equity. And we have what's called scope one, two, and three. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that language, around carbon accounting. Scope 1, 2, and 3 refers to three classes of emissions, uh, direct, uh, that is uh, emissions coming directly from your plant or factory or office operations, and indirect, which is essentially all other sources, except we have a special case of indirect, which is scope 2, uh, and that's your purchased electricity. And that's car called out or carved out because Electricity generation is such a heavy uh, contributor to, to the carbon footprint. What we find in most companies is that scope three, that is your supply chain emissions, um, is roughly 80% of all emissions. So the biggest opportunity 
uh, for making reductions and reducing costs are in your supply chain. And of course, that's where the biggest challenges are as well, because you have less direct control of your supply chain emissions. Carbon accounting is a periodic framework for carboning, uh, for managing emissions. Uh, there's usually an uh, initial setup period, which involved ex extracting your data, uh, mapping uh, your data, your detailed general ledger, bill of materials, direct energy usage to rules that begin to create a carbon footprint or a first iteration. There's a refinement process in the computer modeling and in the production of analytic reports and business actions. And customers usually take 90 to 180 days to implement a first swing through their business actions, which uh, carbon costs affect practically every uh, aspect of the business, everything from logistics to manufacturing processes to product design and materials, and of course, sales and marketing. The nice thing about carbon accounting is though the process is periodically, quarterly updates can occur quickly, and the process can become a cyclical and uh, sort of friendly, uh, or at least familiar, uh, management process. If we look at uh, the reporting, uh, carbon accounting begins with uh, fairly simplistic reports that map directly to your profit and loss statement. In this example, the, this particular company, which is disguised, they looked at materials, manufacturing, and operations in their P&L. Very often, we map that directly to the, the carbon footprint data directly to the financial data so that executives can say, oh, here's my marketing department, here's what I spent, and here is the carbon footprint of my marketing department. Though this is not necessarily that useful for reducing your carbon emissions, so the process usually involves then beginning to slice and dice the data into more meaningful formats. Uh, the first one is often looking at direct and indirect, and here in this example, of course, we, we show that the real strategic impact is down in your scope three emissions. Uh, the question then, of course, is where do these emissions occur? And what are they? So uh, very often we look at what are the top 10 contributors across the company. In, and in this case, steel, plastic in the materials area, and electricity use are your scope too, as well as freight and transportation cover um, over 75% of emissions. So that strategically, uh, management knows how, where to focus, how to do that. Uh, usually it involves digging down into product lines. So we look at generally at product lines, and then we can in turn drill into those to determine where the steel and plastic and electricity is used and begin to develop management goals and actions. It's also interesting to begin to merge uh, carbon footprint metrics with uh, financial metrics, uh, which carbon accounting does very nicely in this example. We're looking at revenue share, profit share, and share of CO2 across the company. Why would you do this? Well, if we look at Model C, it's a small revenue contributor, a very nice profit contributor. But over here in column three, we see that's quite carbon intensive, which the implication there is that well, all that carbon in the product effectively, which is now free, we probably are going to experience significant margin erosion when carbon has a price. Um, if we look at Model B, we see large revenue, nice profit contribution, and sort of balanced uh, CO2. So that's our portfolio. If we dig down a little bit deeper, um, look at Model C, well, yes, we confirm that when carbon has a price, here we're assuming $14 a ton, as Obama mentioned a month or two ago. We have a pretty substantial drop in profitability. Um, and over here on Model B, although it's a sort of a cash cow, um, it has quite low margins and so and a, and a relatively small carbon hit, but relative to the profit share of the company, it's quite significant. So how would this company uh, think about this strategically? Well, number one, if we identify hot spots, uh, steel and plastic are uh, high carbon contributors. Um, Model B is at risk, Model C should probably be addressed, and we might want to look at, at clean energy. Um, but establishing these sort of general high-level targets and then, and then taking actions on those targets we think is, is obviously a, a smart way to proceed.